This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Bossom. I have got Joanna Kowalczyk with me. You are with uh, the Table Community Food Center. Thank you for joining us. Last time you were here, you were here by Zoom, but uh, you're in person today and this is wonderful. We've had a great conversation so far, so we're just going to go right at this. There's so much to talk about. You're with the, you're the garden coordinator. That's right. Yes. With a community garden? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's talk about this because you've got so much going on and spring is here. Yes, it's a really, really exciting time. And um, yeah, this week I am thinking of gathering my volunteers to, to just be in the garden and kind of, you know, come together after a long winter and, and connect in the garden and see what we are going to do. And you've got a few gardens in, in Perth. Yeah, so we have, we actually have three sites. We have um, we have a big site at Rogers Road where we do a lot of our production gardening. So we grow all the garlic. We grow about 1,800 garlic there, and the majority of it goes to the kitchen. So the, the goal is for, uh, for us to supply enough garlic for, for the year so the chefs can use it in the community meals. And then we have a large garden at Las Dual Park where we do most of our gardening. So we meet three times a week between 10 and 2. And it's a, it's a drop-in drop -in program. And people come for uh, an hour. Some people come for the whole four hours. They don't really want to leave. And, um, and it's a very loosely held program. So people who come don't necessarily have to have gardening experience. They can come and learn, they can come and meet people and, and also benefit from, from the food that we grow because about 60% of the food we grow goes to the participant volunteers who come and grow the food because it's an extension of our programming. So it's a, another way to be able to provide food for the community. And, um, and then 40% goes to the programs at the table. So to the dinners or, you know, the food bank, or we have, we have our in-person programs that are coming back as well, like community kitchen and family cook together. So, so that's where the, the other 40% goes from, from our gardening um, time. And then, yeah, and then the third site is our raised garden beds at one, 190 Gore, where the table uh, is. And we have we have a little greenhouse there, so it's really fun to kind of play around with with a little bit of season extension. And the raised gardens give us an opportunity for for more accessible gardening. So an accessible gardening is a program that I'm bringing forward this year. So we are going to start. I believe it's just I'm going to be finalizing all the details today. So I'll be happy to share it after. But I think it's May third that. Uh, I'm going to, to launch the program and we're going to meet twice a month and garden in the backyard and uh, there's going to be a therapeutic element to that program because, um, you know, people who are not able to to garden in the same way as, uh, as others who well, are raised physically... Raised beds will help. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So, so... Um, but really want to dive also into like sensory experiences and um, connecting, you know, connecting with nature and and blending, blending the therapy and the food uh, together. So that's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. And I mean, you, you, in terms of accessibility, you're going to people have people there that have never gardened before, but they've always wanted to. You're mm -hmm. going to have people there that used to garden but are not able to anymore, and mm -hmm. they're going to be able to participate. So that's just so wonderful. Because mm -hmm. you talk about uh, gardening being therapeutic. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, for me, it's it's about holding space for people mm -hmm. so they can be be there, be with nature, and and you know disconnect, and also have the opportunity to pay attention and notice. Like that is something that that I feel really passionate about, and I kind of bring that also, you know, into our garden sessions there's no pressure in those sessions when we, you know, garden at Last Duel Park. People can come and just be, and they can come for an hour, they can come for four hours, and 
there's there's no expectation you know so we get a lot of work done because we garden f quite a bit and um, yeah so so creating this kind of safe environment where you know people can come and disconnect is really important and what I did want to mention is that we are bringing back the the evening session on Mondays we used to garden from 530 to 7 to create opportunities for people who work during the day to come and be in the garden so that's going to be coming back this year and I mean we, we, again when we talk about gardening being therapeutic people could come and just be quiet mm -hmm. or they come and they've got common goals and commonalities with everybody around them and they talk it's therapeutic mm -hmm. in that way too because they're all doing the same thing something they're interested in yeah and you know we also have a forest uh, a forest garden where we have a lot of perennial edibles and we have a big uh, perennial border to to really tie tie it all together and bring the pollinators in and bring you know bring flowers I grow a lot of flowers in the garden so there's always opportunities for people to take cut flowers home and and again bring that back to some to have something beautiful to look at and, and to take and it home yes yeah and mm -hmm. we also have bees too so uh, you know sometimes I just invite people to like sit and observe the bees on the flowers it's like just sit here <laughs> You know. and, and, and see how important they are to yeah. our, our balance of nature. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, th through COVID, a lot of things got shut down. People couldn't do anything, but mm -hmm. you ran this all outdoors. You were able to keep it going. Yeah, so I had to modify, uh, you know, the format because we have a drop-in program, so I don't really know who is coming. Um, and during COVID, I had to make a schedule because I, you know, I had five people at a time. We have a lot of space and we are outside. So there was really a lot of opportunity to to you know to be together without without it being a problem. So we were really lucky because people really really needed needed the connection and and um, yeah connection with each other and connection connection with the earth as well. Absolutely. So how many people usually come out? How many volunteers have you got? Yeah. So I can get like up to twelve people. Uh, you know at a time so that's where the challenge comes in in terms of giving instruction because I do coordinate all the work and I plan it so people come and you know they're given instruction and off they go but I do have to check in on everyone to make sure that they're they're uh, you know well supported in, in their tasks so I uh, I actually love to to garden on Friday nights when everybody's gone because I find like I miss, you know, really connecting with the garden and during the sessions it's really hard for me to stay focused. You sometimes see I start a job, you know, next to a volunteer because we engage and then all of a sudden I get pulled off. So there's mm -hmm. these like five to seven areas of, of started <laughs> started work. <laughs> so you've that got I do. three different gardens? Is that three? So that's three, yeah. Three. But so we, we garden at it one garden at a time. Okay, and yeah. so you must like, do you do one Monday, one Wednesday, one? But how do you do that? Yeah, so I usually send a, a message to to let people know where we're going to be. So we're predominantly in the Last Duel Park, and then Rogers Road is, you know, because it's more of a production, it doesn't need a daily um, daily maintenance in the same way. But we definitely need to be there, you know, once a week. It's it's where a little bit more of a focus for the summer student comes in because I do get a summer student through the Canada Summer Jobs Program. So, um, so yeah, I kind of navigated through communication, yeah. So you must have been busy this last little while because I, I, I believe I'm not a gardener, but I, I know a lot of friends that are, they've got their seeds started. Yes, and I start most of my seeds at home. I have a, a really big grow, grow setup. And then I also have couple of volunteers who have plant stands that we uh, we provide and then I set them up with seeds and all the supplies and the dates and they start the seeds in their homes and then um, yeah and then we come together and do you know transplanting and and uh, and then things start to to multiply <laughs> and uh, and space becomes an issue I do have a greenhouse at home so I I do take care of a lot of that at my at my place we are working you know our goal is to have a greenhouse at last dual park and it's it's a process that we started last year um so it's 
just a matter of, of finding the grants to, to support that project. But that's the, that's the goal. And, you know, having a greenhouse that people can also enjoy in the winter, just mm -hmm. to be in a space that's warm and, and sunny, like. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to come out to the garden and, and it only takes a couple of days to see mm -hmm. the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a couple of days of, of rain, a couple of days of, of sunshine, and my goodness, I bought a potted uh, two of them, potted uh, tulips on Friday. Mm -hmm. Didn't even know what color they were or anything, and, and on Sunday they were mm -hmm. full bloom. I'm sure if I sat there and watched it long enough, I would have seen some movement. Yes, <laughs> it's amazing how fast things go when they get started. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, and weeds too. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we do a lot of uh, yeah, we do a lot of weeding, but we also do a lot of you know, mulching and, and uh, ways to, methods, we, yeah, we use methods to try to eliminate that. And then we also do a lot of, you know, education on, on eating the weeds because there's a lot of weeds yes. in the garden that we can actually eat and, um, and they also provide us medicine. So, you know, again, that is something that is tied into the, the garden a bit too. And, and appreciating, you know, like the dandelions being the pollinators and, and the yes. importance of keeping them. And you can eat the flowers, you can eat the leaves, and you can eat the roots. And they're so good for, you know, for our health. And, and uh, yeah. So yeah, you must have a core group, but are you looking for more members or? Yeah, work? so I do have a core group, mm -hmm. but I do have, I always get new inquiries. So this year I am actually uh, really surprised about the interest that I've had so far. So I have probably about 15 new members that have inquired. So I am going to uh, host a an orientation session because usually like the, you know, interested volunteers kind of trickle in. But this year I feel like there's there's a definite uh, influx. So that information will be updated on my website if people would like to come to the orientation session. And um, yeah, and I can always be contacted for for more information if people are interested in volunteering. I, I see a lot of people, you know, downsizing and they don't have the garden space anymore, but you've given them the opportunity to, to keep working in the garden and getting in the dirt and growing things. Yeah, and that's exactly what this program is about, right? Mm -hmm. Is to, to enable people who don't have space or don't have the resources or don't have the knowledge to engage in gardening. And because there's no expectation of experience in my volunteers and... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of teaching that goes on, and and again, because it's a relaxed atmosphere, it's really really easy to, um, yeah, oh. to to engage. And I always, you know, I also do a lot of um, like mirroring in in nature. So you know, what can we learn from the gardening experience? So uh, you know, the most common one that comes to mind when uh, when I was just thinking is you know the idea of forgiveness when when a volunteer pulls up a plant by accident that wasn't meant to be and we can't do anything about it. So then it's like, well, we got to move on and forgive yes. and, and learn, That's <laughs> learn right. at Mistakes the same time. Happen. We're all human. Even yeah. dealing with the plants, we are human. Yes, yeah. yes, for sure, for mm. sure. Well, I need you to come back and talk more about the, your, your raised flower beds and your accessibility program. I'm so interested in that. Mm -hmm. I want to learn more about that. So once you get that going, will you come back? <laughs> sure, yeah. I would love Excellent. to come back and, and talk about everything else that we have going on excellent is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap up uh i think just you know for people to 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 check in with our website right. and i'm going to be putting information there about the new programming so the accessible gardening and also the three-part workshop that we're going to host with dr sean Ikimovich from from kempville he's a naturopath so we're going to blend in growing and herbalism to, uh, with his support so uh, I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. That's yeah. wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us. You came all the way from Perth today. Uh, I, I, you had a busy weekend. You were doing the Hamilton, the Toronto route and everything too. Yeah. So you've had a busy weekend, lots of driving. Happy Easter, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, for sure. It was Thank great. you for joining us. Joanna Kowalczyk. Did I do it right? Kowalczyk. Great. Yeah, Perfect. There we go. <laughs> yes. From the Table Community Food Center. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Kathy. Mm -hmm.